Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365, wisdom for every day of our lives. And today, my friend, we will embark on the study of Proverbs 13. We will be studying from verses 1 through 10. But first, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Father. Thank you so much that you have good plans for us. You have good thoughts for us, my Father. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us, oh God. My Father, you're always thinking of us. And I just want to thank you, Lord, because your thoughts about us are pure and perfect and lovely. Your thoughts about us, my Father, their thoughts of victory and their thoughts of encouragement to affirm us and to validate us, oh God. Father God, you speak into our spirits, my Father, through the power of your word. And you speak through our, to our spirit, my Father, the words of love and the words of grace that only you can say, my Father, because no one in the world talks like you. No one in the world, my Father, speaks words of life like you do. You are the only one that can encourage us, my Father, to stand up and to soar and to fly and to do everything that we believe that we cannot do, but you tell us that we can. Thank you so much, my Father, for who you are. And as we read your word, my Father, and as we read Proverbs, as we read, my God, the verses and the words that you have, my Father, infused through the power of your word, through your love letter, oh God, we become better people, we become better men and women, oh God, and that is the purposes and the plans of your heart, my God. Thank you so much, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. Thank you so much, my Father. Amen. So my friend, today we are on Proverbs 13, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, A wise son hears his father's instructions, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of his mouth a man eats what is good, but the desire of the treacherous is for violence. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. The righteous hates falsehood, but the wicked brings shame and disgrace. Richness, or righteousness, excuse me, guards him whose ways are blameless, but sin overthrows the wicked. One pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. The ransom of a man's life is his wealth, but a poor man hears no threat. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By insolence comes nothing but strife, but with those who take advice is wisdom. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. And that is verse 11. So we went from verses 1 through 11. A wise son heeds his father's instructions. The fact is that Solomon is still delivering great advice to his son. And it makes wise for a man to listen to his parents. A scoffer does not listen to rebuke. The scoffer is always fooling around, fooling. Uh, everything, just making fun of everything and of everyone. A scoffer always makes fun of God and the and the um, wisdom of God, which for a scoffer is just antiquated. And the scoffer does not listen. He really does not listen uh, to instruction or rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Wise and good speech brings blessings of many different kinds, including the blessing of prosperity. The soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. Those who are unfaithful to God and his wisdom may find themselves supported by or through violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide, wide his lips shall have destruction. He who guards his mouth preserves life. Wise and good words can preserve life, 
This is true both in a moment of crisis and over a lifetime. It is so important that we learn how to be quiet and how not to allow our flesh or our pride or our vengeance or any type of bitterness um, take over ourselves, take over our mouths. Because once things are said, you cannot take them back. You can't take them back. And so it is better to guard your tongue, guard your mouth of saying those words that once they're said, you want to take them back and you want to apologize and you are so sorry. But exercising self-control has a lot to do with wisdom. Wisdom shows us that we need to exercise self-control in the area of our mouth. And it is better to stay quiet. It's a sign of a big man, of a wise man or woman, to stay quiet. Uh, during an altercation, during a confrontation, you can speak certain things, but there are things that we should never say. And uh, we cannot allow our mind to always have its way or our mind to always speak through the mouth. We should be quiet and stay silent and not hurt anybody's feelings, no matter what we are feeling. These are things, these are times and situations where we need to go home and pray about it. Pray about it, surrender it to God. And it's better to keep our mouth shut. And he who, who res preserves his mouth preserves his life and also preserves his relationships. He who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Sometimes we act foolishly, we act headstrong, we act sometimes, we even say blasphemous words. Once they're spoken, they're out and you can't take them back. And the government of the tongue is a rare but useful talent. It means that you can be in control of your tongue. You don't have to have your tongue control you. It is often remarked that God has given us two eyes that we may see much, two ears that we may hear much, but has given us one tongue and that fenced in with teeth to indicate that though we hear and see much, we should speak little. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. So we know that the slugger, a lazy person, shall not really attain much. The soul of the diligent shall be made rich. We often hear, we often hear people that they want everything. They have dreams, they have hopes, but yet they are not doing anything to attain those dreams. In other words, putting one foot forward and doing what needs to be done one day at a time, building perseverance, building discipline, building, building consistency. And that is how you attain your dreams. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. So a righteous man hates lying. The Lord God hates lying. A wicked man will lie to get out of a jam. A person that does not want to hear it, a person that does not want to be scolded or does not want to hear the rebuke of somebody else will always lie themselves out of a jam, out of a problem. Now, out of when they're being caught, they will lie. It, it takes a big man or a big woman to be able to admit that they made a mistake, admit that they were wrong. And so it is better for you to admit your, your wrongs or your mistakes than rather have someone find you out. The righteous guards him whose ways is blameless, but wickedness overthrows sinners. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless. And so when you honor God, you will, you will say, I was wrong, I made a mistake. First, you will come out and expose it yourself rather than be exposed. And it is better, it takes a big man or a big woman to do that. There is one who makes himself rich yet has nothing and one who makes himself poor yet has great riches. 
it is not it is not wise for you to act like you have a lot when you really don't and it is not wise because everyone has a mask on in the world we have all been covering ourselves since adam and eve and so it is better to be real and to show who we are and be as it be as it may then be and act like something that we are not because when we are found, found out and when we are exposed it really is a cause of shame and disgrace the ransom of a man's life is his riches but the poor does not hear rebuke so it is of great measure and in many ways a ransom a ransom when we when we are a certain way that we truly aren't and there is a term for it in um, the realm of psychology and uh, that term is the imposter syndrome when a person acts a certain way and a person um, portrays to be a certain way in front of humanity and yet he is totally the opposite and so that person and that soul will have will progress into a condition called the imposter syndrome and there is a whole set of psychological ramifications when we are being uh, imposters so i recommend that you always be real always be true the light of the righteous rejoices but the lamp of the wicked will be put out so righteousness godliness are all expressed in real life it is associated with light and with rejoicing there is nothing wrong with a person who claims to be righteous yet rarely has evidence of light there is something wrong with that person because there's rarely evidence of light and rejoicing so if you claim to be righteous you claim to have a relationship with god you should have evidence of light and rejoicing and joy in your life the lamp of the wicked will be put out so the wicked is completely opposite to the righteous it is people that are walking in the darkness so if we are children of the light we are children of the day we do not walk in darkness we do not associate with darkness by pride comes nothing but strife but with the well advised is wisdom excessive self focus and self regard constantly generates strife when people are focused on their own exaltation they will always attempt to advance themselves at the expense of others and pride is dividing pride divides pride always wants to have people in their corner pride cannot stand alone pride will always have people um, they will divide and conquer and so pride is a very serious thing that we need to always be in check we need to always be uh, cognizant whether we are being excessively self-focused and self-regarded instead of Christ focused when you are Christ focused you can concentrate you can focus on other people on what they are going through rather than what you are going through all the time and speaking about your problems and being excessively self-focused and that is truly a condition that happens to a lot of people especially uh, people that have um that have anxiety people that have problems with their personality they do have those problems and uh, that happens a lot and wealth is gained by dishonesty and it will be diminished but who, those who gather by labor will increase so if you are trying to gain any wealth by being dishonest you're just going to be found out you're just going to have a problem to maintain your wealth because like i said before there is nothing hidden in this world and so dishonesty dishonest gain will always be diminished but he who gathers by labor by his work by his integrity they will increase 
they will increase because you will find favor you will find favor with God and you will find favor with people and that is in the Word of God it's in the Word of God and so honest gains honesty is something that it's very important very important so I recommend that everything that you do you do it in honesty Thank you so much, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful word. Thank you, O God, for being in our lives. Thank you for the leading and the guidance. Thank you, O God, in Jesus' name. My friends, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, dance in the rain. But most of all, I encourage you to keep on smiling until we meet again. Have a beautiful, blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy, I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy. And yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.